Am I the worst uh, uncle of all time? It's possible. My, uh, well, okay, so like one of, um, he's not really like a nephew, so I, okay, like I'm trying to figure out how to explain this, okay? My wife's mom, so that's my mother-in-law, has a brother, okay? So that's her uncle, <laughs> my wife's uncle. My wife's uncle has a, has two kids. Sorry about the phrasing here, okay? My wife's uncle has two kids. So I think it's my wife's cousin. And I don't know, that's my cousin-in-law. They're 17 and 15 just due to the age differences between my mother-in-law and my wife's uncle. My mother-in-law and her brother to make it as simple as possible. We were trying to figure out what to get uh, the 17-year-old boy for Christmas because I have not seen him since he was eight, okay? Um, he said, I'm getting into investing. Excuse me. What what is that message? What is that tab? It's driving me crazy. Did you hear that tab? Or did you hear that badunk? Yes. That was Google Chat. Do I even have a Google Chat? I do have a Google Chat open right now. I have a second uh, Chrome window. Okay, sorry, close that up. Anyway, sorry, sorry, I apologize. <laughs> he said he's getting into investing. You know what I bought him? Well, actually, it, it was my used copy. But anyway, you know what I gave him? A copy of the number one investing book on the planet. If you're getting into investing, uh, any time that you spend reading tweets from people who are like they have Marcus Aurelius or something in their avatar, please spend an equal amount of time reading one book, simply one book, called A Random Walk Down Wall Street by Burden Malkiel. Here's the thing, okay, as I start the casino here with Will We Make the Finals. He's 17. He may read the book. He may not read the book. Um, it's not my responsibility to, to change his life, you know? You can lead a horse to water. Maybe, maybe he'll drink it and decide that... Uh, or maybe drink it. Maybe he'll read it and, and decide, uh, you know, that he, he likes what it's talking about. Or maybe, on the other hand... He will uh, read it and say, this is boring as hell. I'm going into 10x leverage long uh, NASDAQ ETFs. Or maybe he'll say the stock market is rigged. I'm just going to buy Cumcoin or something like that. I don't know. But I gave, I gave, I've read them all. I've read the Peter Lynch's and uh, I've read, uh, well, I haven't read security analysis, but I can pretend. I've read uh, the... Jason Zweig, introduction to the revised edition of The Intelligent Investor. The rest of the book is insanely boring. I gave him the, the cream of the crop, okay? Next year, he's going to be like, nah, I'm going to, I'm in the, like, cars now. That's fine. Hey, yo, A.A. Ron, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Look at this lobby, dude! Look at this damn lobby. S, 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 A, 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 B plus, B plus. Okay. By the way, thumb thumb's doing great. Thank you for asking. I just got a little bandage on it now. It's not uh, the wound is not weeping. There uh, it, there's no no odorous uh, element to it, and then I can actually like click a little bit. It's a new it's a new era. Okay, relatively strong wind. Nail still there? Yeah, but my brother-in-law, who is a medical doctor, said there's a chance I might lose it. Let me get a 3.7 backspin. What the heck? I'm all out of practice, man. Holy cow. Nice shot. That's what I wanted? That's way too much. The downhill was more than expected. I was the furthest away. That's that's insulting to me. Is this downhill? Tony Hawk's downhill jam? It's a little it's a little downhill. I wouldn't mind just getting like a two piece with some backspin because of the wind. Little lighter than I wanted, but you know what? We putt for par. Is Curse to Golf ever coming back? No. Happy holidays to you as well. 
And Danny Kaza, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you, thank you. What a putt. What a, he still got it. By the way, I don't really want to go off, but I have like a bone to pick with the Cheesecake Factory. Turns out we were staying relatively close to a cheesecake factory because um, we stayed in a hotel because my in-laws house was like totally packed. My wife loves the cheesecake factory. When I walked to Target, which by the way was like 0 0.2 miles away, but took me 15 minutes to walk to the Target because there's no way to cross. There's no sidewalks and you can't cross the street in the United States of America. You have to walk seven blocks this way until you get a light that changes to a walk sign once every five minutes. And then you cross the street. They give you three seconds to cross eight lanes. And then you got to walk seven blocks back the other way. Anyway, long story short, I took a photo of the Cheesecake Factory. Because my wife loves the Cheesecake Factory. So we said, you know what, tonight we'll, we'll treat our guests. We'll, we'll all get like takeout from the Cheesecake Factory. I, it, it was Christmas Eve at the Cheesecake Factory. It's a busy time, okay? I don't know why I'm sitting down. Why am I sitting down? The, the, my work here is not done. I'm just gonna send it. Nice shot. Under the tree? I'll survive. We do curbside pickup at the Cheesecake Factory. First time in my entire life, I'm doing curbside pickup, okay? Usually I walk into the restaurant. We get there, we park. We park at exactly the time. This is important, let me focus. We park at exactly the time the Cheesecake Factory tells us to park. We park in a spot called curbside pickup. We wait there 15 minutes, 20 minutes, no response, okay? So finally, I go inside of the restaurant. Because the parking lot has uh, space for 13,000 cars, I go inside of the restaurant. Not a good putt. It takes me, um, what a chip, holy cow. It's par five, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Takes me 15 minutes to walk from my car into the restaurant. I get into the restaurant, there's 13,000 people waiting in there for a table. Unfortunately, the Cheesecake Factory, a pretty small restaurant, it only has uh, 800 tables in it. So, I, I get up and I'm waiting in line to talk to the host so he can tell me to fuck myself. And while I'm waiting in line, I got a text, and the text said, hey, your order is ready. Tell me what part, just text back the number of your parking spot, and we'll bring it out to you. A, a nice robot texted me that. So I walk back into the parking lot, and I'm looking in the parking spot for a fucking number, and there's like a little, like a plaque. I'm about to get eliminated, by the way. The plaque does not have a number on it. This is ruthless. This is scary. I don't want to be with these gamers anymore. I, I get on my hands and knees. I'm looking under my car. Um, there's no number painted on the spot. Obviously, we did not make the finals. I go to the back of the car. I get on my hands and knees. There's no number on the spot at all. I text back, hey, we're in a curbside pickup spot. Um, here's the make and model of our vehicle. It's a pearlescent Opal uh, Bugatti Veyron. And then silence. Not 10, 15 minutes go by. I receive no response. Kate says, you should go back inside. I go back inside. I get back in the lineup to eventually talk to the host to tell me to go fuck myself. Everyone else in the Cheesecake Factory is like looking at me with, with hostility because they're like, hey, we're waiting for a table. And I'm like, I know. I just got to go talk to this guy so he can tell me to fuck off. And then, so I'm, I'm waiting in the line for like 15 minutes. And... Uh, at this point, it's been four hours trying to just get my um, skinny, licious Mexicana salad. And then I get a text from my wife that says, hey, come back. They brought out the food. And I'm like, is, did any, did, did the software developers consult a customer at any given moment in the process of building this automated curbside pickup system? How about a confirmation text that is like, we got your text and we'll bring your food out when it's available. How about a confirmation text that is like, hey, we just delivered your food. Enjoy your skinny licious salad from the Cheesecake Factory. Download our app to get some reward points, blah, blah, blah. Instead, it was just like, you know, 
It, it, shit was driving me crazy. Anyway, the food was pretty good, though. Also, it was blowing my mind, because originally I was looking for, like, a healthy salad. Harvest chicken salad with a, with a vinaigrette. Came to, like, 1,300 calories. Then I remembered, oh, if you want something that's good for you at the Cheesecake Factory, you have to go to the Skinny Licious menu. I got a Skinny Licious Mexican salad. It was 500 calories. Shit was, like, this big. It was, like, the size of a large pizza pan. What are they doing with how, well, the 1,700 calorie salad must have been like served in a trough? I don't understand. I mean, this is four piece backspin. I'm washed. I'm not washed. That's a hole in one. Cut it under, cut it under, cut it, backspin me. It's a hill. We're going to get a lot of momentum. Oh! <laughs> oh, what a what a chip, man. Holy cow. Beautiful putt. Beautiful putt. Whew. Anyway, the salad was pretty good. So if, if you're asking, what's better, Cheesecake Factory or Popeyes? Cheesecake Factory is better. My two cents. No, I did not tweet about being live. You're, you're right about that. Hold on. Let me, let me go back here. I'm live and golfing. Minus two, I'm sorry. It's just, it's, I don't know, man. Just wasn't that impressed with the, with the Popeyes. Yeah, Popeyes is fast food. Is it, I guess it's not an American thing, but you are probably American, so I'm going to say that it's an American thing. People are always like, yeah, of course Popeyes is bad. I eat it because I hate myself. Just stop with the negative self-talk. Of course, dude, of the food that tastes like shit and makes me feel like shit, Popeye's is amongst the best. No, just like, be, be kind to yourself, okay? You deserve it. Nice Not the bunker. This is why I clubbed down. Oh my God, you got so much of a bounce, you piece of crap! What the heck was that? It's all right. We're qualifying. Iron me? Okay. We, it, just because we got iron is important because that means we can backspin. I know it's uphill. I think this is full power, no backspin. Because we need to make it past the bunker. Backspin would have been nice. That's why golf is hard. Nice on. Okay, this is for birdie. <laughs> it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a putt. We we want to be full power. Pretty minor bend, but it's a long distance. <laughs> Nobody in the history ever thought this day would ever end. Even with a little style on it at the end of the day. Holy cow. <clears throat> also, when we were, uh, we were eating the Popeyes, we were talking about American fast food chains. We had the classic In-N-Out versus uh, every other burger chain debate. My in-laws are, uh, they went to school in California and they lived there for a long time. So they were big into In-N-Out. Caden and I, were, we're on the Shake Shack, uh, hello, the Shake Shack uh, grind. We're eating the Popeyes. My sister-in-law says, hey, you know, they opened the Shake Shack like a couple miles down the road. I'm like, oh, son of a, why, why are we out here debasing ourselves with Popeyes? We could have gotten a, a flat of Shack burgers. Probably would have cost us like four hundred dollars, but you know it did. Some things are are priceless.
in and out doobie kind of mid. I mean, I think the, I, I don't know how many times I've had this discussion, but like, I think that the burger at in and out is pretty good. And I, I always feel bad because anytime someone likes in and out, I'm like, you're right, because it's not healthy, but it's certainly like, wow, what a chip. It's certainly like more real than, than a lot of fast food fries, but the fries are like so not impressive at all. So I was like, I, I told my brother-in-law, I was like, I like the burger. I think it's pretty good, but the fries are like some of my least favorite fries. And he's like, you know, they make them with real potatoes. And I'm like, I know. Whatever they're doing, they need to honestly add like some more artificial stuff into the French fries. I was driving. Honestly, like it wasn't that bad. Once we got out of Canada... I mean, okay, actually, so we were driving to the U.S. on Christmas Eve. Our daughter was in the backseat with her iPad. We get almost to the point, we're probably like, you know, five miles away from the border. She throws up. It happens. Kids get car sick. Um, but she had drank like, you know, a pint of chocolate milk in the morning. Hold on, let me continue this story after, watch this drive. So she threw up like all over herself and all over her car seat. And then Kate was like, you got to pull over. So I, at the earliest opportunity, I pulled off to the side. By the time I did, she had thrown up on herself like another two times. So Kate and I took like half an hour at the side of the road in the slush and the, and the freezing rain, just changing her. And all we had to clean up were like wet wipes. So we're using the wet wipes to like clean all this vomit out of the car. It was, that part was a little annoying, but the driving was fine. And I, honestly, we laughed. We just, you just gotta laugh about it sometimes. You just gotta have a sense of humor. Nice I'll take it. I, I wanted three and a half, so this is like a big overshoot, but yeah, it's pretty bad. And then, like, no disrespect to the, the noble people of Washington, but I made that tweet that was like, uh, how are the roads in Washington State right now? In northwestern Washington State? People were like, I, I got some honest replies, and then I got some replies from people that are like, they are horrendous, do not drive right now. We crossed the border, it was bare pavement. It was like the, the most ideal road conditions you could ever ask for. I get, we've all seen the TikToks of the cars sliding around, but like the, the interstates and the side streets were, were totally fine. And then it got up to like 11 degrees Celsius, so it all melted. <clears throat> Now it's just like slushy. I crashed my car in New West. I left my wallet in El Segundo and you don't hear me writing the iconic 90s rap song about it. What Pokemon cards did your nieces pop? I don't even, like, I'm not qualified. I was, the, I was in charge of looking up the TCG player price list for all these cards. And even I can't, I don't understand how to look them up. What the hell is Secret? What the hell is Rainbow? What the hell is VMAX? VMAX Alt Art? I don't even know what the default art is. What the hell is the Alt Art? It's not possible to look them up. Nice shot. That being said... Ooh, baby! <laughs> I am loving this. Ow! <laughs> I really thought that could be the one, dude. Oh, I really thought that could be the one. As someone who's opened some Magic the Gathering booster boxes in my life, I think it was like a once-in-a-lifetime booster box. They got like almost every chase rare from Silver Tempest. Again, I don't know um, what that means, 
I don't know what I'm talking about. But when I was looking up the price list, they got that like Luigi uh, or Lugia VMAX that was like 210 bucks. And then they got like four other Lugias. They got one Lugia that was like, I think it's just the mythic rare version, full stop. Then they got one that was like rainbow colored. Then they got one that was like silver colored. They got a Regia something, Regia Drago V. A mythic rare hollow um, energy, super energy or something. Like, I honestly worried that we were giving them like, it was a bad lesson for them. Because they're going to think that they're, like, innately lucky. Like, their first data point for gambling is, like, you know, this booster box was, like, 100 bucks, and they got, like, $215 worth of value out of it. Everybody qualified for the finals? Well, we made it. Will we win the finals? Are they actually going to sell it? No. Nobody sells it. They just say, holy cow, I spent 120 bucks on this booster box. I got 200 bucks worth of value. Then you put the cards in sleeves and then you put them in your closet and then you die and like your nephew clears them out in the 2070s or something like that. That's the way it goes. Nice shot. Drop it, drop it. Drop it more, drop it more, drop it more. Thank you. They should make a driver that you can backspin. You ever think about that? Why didn't you think of that? Because you're not Tiger. That's why. Okay, I'm just playing it cool. Did you get the chicken or the tenders? Listen, I, I'm not trying... If you like Popeyes, you know, we got other problems in the world, okay? It's, it wasn't bad. It just wasn't to the standard that I expected, okay? Based on how much people talk about it. Quiet, let me focus for a second. That's what I wanted. On the hill. On the hill. What a bounce. No, 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 no. It's too much. It's too much. It's too much. Mm, juice me, juice me. It's puttable. It's puttable. It's puttable. It's puttable. It's puttable. You know what? I'll take that. We drained those. Okay, did we make it? That was a very solid round of golf. Imagine if we hold in one when we should have hold in one. <clears throat> Let's go! <laughs> Sorry. Hey, NL, I drank three different kinds of alcohol last night and threw up my cocktail. Thoughts? It's just, I, honestly, it's a hard lesson to learn. But the older you get, you, you very slowly start to chip the lesson together, like out of, out of a slab of marble, that it's just not worth it, man. Like, one, one drink... I'm chilling. I'm like, this is amazing. Second drink, I'm like, I'm even more chill. But the, somewhere around like the end of the second drink, sorry, wrong bet. At, at least as like a, a, a man in his 30s, you can feel like the vitamins being leached out of your body. And that's it. Like it, after the, it, you know, when you're 28, you might be like, yeah, I'll take another one. But now that I'm 34, I'm like, no, that's good. I'm good. And now I'm just going to go home and be like, why am I so tired? And then like, just sort of sit there and like watch TV for 45 minutes and work through the alcohol dehydrogenase and then like, you know, go have a productive rest of my day.
stop blaming your age. Okay, I don't drink enough to have a tolerance that allows me to drink levels of alcohol that are that toxic for my organs, including my heart, my brain, my liver, obviously, kidneys, my skin. I do drink on occasion, but I try to keep it, you know, in moderation because bragging about how much you drink is like only cool when you're 18 and you're talking to other 18 year olds when you're like 34 people start to be like um are you all right like it's not even the christmas party at the christmas party you can go crazy by the way i stand by what i'm saying in the title of today's stream i think and maybe there's some currency bias but um i feel like this is the best week of the year. Especially because Christmas fell on like a, a Sunday, Boxing Day on a Monday. There's nothing to do, man. You're telling me that 20, 27, 28, 29, 30, the Tuesday to Friday, that, that time period does not exist. I, if you work retail, that's a different story. You're probably like in the shit right now. But for me, <laughs> it's like... <laughs> There's nothing to do, man. It's, well, like, I, I, let me put it this way. If I received an important email this week, I would sever my business relationship with the organization that sent it to me. I'm like, really? You're sending, hey, due on Friday. Really? You got something due December 30th? Like, you got to reorganize your business because that's not the way, like, people work. Unless it's like a medical thing or like otherwise urgent, but still, we sent. Nice oh, this one might get a favorable bounce now. We know the green is frictionless. That, dude, to be on the green, stroke one on this hole is very rare. Hey, Scuba Steve the First, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Thank you. Insane putt. Congratulations, Trevor. Where's Corey? Not even close. Not even in the ballpark. We take those. Oh, VIP Daniel! Hello, hello! You watch any of those movies? No, I didn't watch anything because I don't, I'd like. <clears throat> I was talking about it to like my brother-in-law, and I think we both were on like the same page. I think when you become this, and this sounds depressing, but it's not. I think parents will get it. When you become like a a parent, at a certain point, there is no like free time. The free. Like, there's no, like, oh, I'm going to take my daughter to the park, and then I'm going to get off the shift, and I'm going to watch Glass Onion so I can be, like, part of the zeitgeist. Like, taking your daughter to the park is the... That's life. That's what you do the work for, is so that you can be the guy who takes her to the park. So you can be the guy who's, like... She's, like, I cooked you donut soup in my fake kitchen set, and you're, like... That's like, so when you're like, how have you not had a chance to see everything everywhere all at once yet? Like, honestly, without being a hater, it's because I got other shit I'd rather be doing. Like, nurturing another human, because like they're only this size for like a very small amount of time. It's important to like instill good habits and a good relationship with the family and et cetera, et cetera. Hey, Slog Jam, thanks for the, the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna level with you. I'm waiting for this guy. I wanna see you make it. Nope, that's not getting there, okay. Take a shot. Take your shot, you piece. Take your shot, you piece! Hey, hey, Scuba Steve, thank you again, thank you. I'm not, I'm not doing it, I'm, I'm playing it. We're playing some sense ball here. I'll take that. Beautiful shot. Ray where we wanted it. 
I'm gonna watch Glass Onion. I just, I can't promise you that it'll be, like, in a timely fashion. So if you're like, yeah, no, it's okay, I'll give you a week, then you don't understand. You should understand by now. Okay. We don't have a ton of time. That's what I want. That's too much. No, maybe it's okay. Maybe it's completely fine. Whoa! Blue sparks! Entitleist7. Thank you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's too much. This is a putter, that's why. I'm accounting for wind, but we're putting. I can't read. No, I'm chipping. I'm, ch I'm chipping this. It's a one piece, no backspin. Okay, we need a little more and a little less. People are so like anti backspin pilled. It's how I know like you're not cut out for like no offense, but anything. Because you're only looking at the most recent data points. Does backspin occasionally end up being a bad decision? Yeah. Has using backspin made our approach game like a thousand times better than it used to be? Yes. You have to look at the area under the curve of the graph, not just the derivative of the most recent point. Also, it's just fun. Yeah, I love when you land it and it goes... This is kind of a hot lobby itself. We're six points back. That's a little spooky. <clears throat> you stock up on calculus analogies? No, my niece, uh, she's only in the fifth grade. So she recently started learning linear algebra. In, in her public school, she's learning the multiplication tables up to 12. And in Kumon, she's learning uh, how to do the, the Taylor series right now. So she's not quite at, at calculus yet. <clears throat> but twixt. Taylor series is calculus. I was talking about a series of Taylor Swift um, songs. Hold on, hold on. Something like this. I'd like a three piece. This is a perfect backspin situation. Felt that being a little much, but you know what? The backspin's gonna keep us comp uh, keep us competitive. Ooh, it was nothing. Nice on. <clears throat> Are you gonna put your daughter in those after school academies? Honestly, it's a conversation for me to have, like, with my wife. Please roll, you ball. But like, so my, my in-laws and thus like my nieces, they're involved in everything, you know? They have school, of course, that's like the bare minimum. Then they have like some after school additional education like Kumon. They also do sports. And on top of that, they have a, quite, a, quite a crowded social calendar for, uh, you know, two kids who are 12 and 8. That seems like a little crazy for me, but maybe that's because I haven't, you know, eased myself into that. But, like, the dad gets off work at, like, 5. He's like, I got to go. Like, the kids are at home because the mom picked them up, so now I got to go home and pick up the kids, and I got to take them to Kumon, and then I'm just going to sit in my car for 45 minutes at Kumon, and then I'm going to take them to, you know, soccer academy or whatever because everything's an academy now. That seems too much for me. At the same time, nice shot. I think I am kind of a tiger dad. And we've, we've talked about it a lot before. Oh! <laughs> Do 
Dude, we're knocking on the door today. What a putt. But I, as a kid, my I, there's like a generational like um, oscillation. My parents grew up without uh, having a lot of money. So they, you know, had to help out a ton at home. They had to get jobs when they were able to get jobs. And they said, when we are parents, we're going to let our kids be kids. And then I was the... Oh, okay, I got eliminated after that incredible hole. Good luck, VIP Daniel. And all the rest. And all the rest. So they said, like, when we're going to be parents, we're going to let our kids be kids. So I was one of those kids. And, like... From 13 to, like, 17, I was doing fucking nothing, dude. Which is fine. But, like, it's not like those were even, like, incredible memories or anything. No disrespect to my parents. I love them. But, like, uh, I was just, like, playing way too much Halo. So I know how much free time a child has after school if they don't fill it with something. I'm not saying they have to be at, you know, Hagwon for five hours after school and then they start doing their real school homework at like 10 p.m. and they go to bed at 12.30 because then they've got a Hagwon homework and then they got to wake up at five for gymnastics or whatever. I would not, I don't see myself doing that. But I definitely do see putting my daughter in like a lot of activities. And I know this sounds like it's very, this is like a bad take and I'm willing to own it because it's kind of what I believe. But I also feel like depending on the school she goes to, like, and, and the, honestly, depending on like her level of scholastic ability, like the public school curriculum is like not enough. It needs like some supplementation, not to get her to the point where she's like ready for society, but just because she's probably, if, if she's, relatively bright and she tries kind of hard then she's gonna be bored and then you're like your ass is like bored in the 11th grade so weirdly enough you're like this shit is too easy you actually end up doing worse on it because you're like i don't care about it anymore you're like i'm just gonna put in like the bare minimum level of effort to be like at least contented and then you know you then i just think that yeah I don't know. Um, that's just my take as someone who, like, it happened to me. Or she could become, like, a pro Halo player. I'm not pandering. This is my real opinion. If anything, like, chat's pandering to me. Because normally I'm like, kids should have 10 hours of homework at night. And people are like, I want you to die. Now people are like, hey, hey, he's right. Let him cook. Check this out. Give me a chance. Give, okay, it's not making it over the tree, but this is an okay rough. Oh, maybe it, it's... It, dude, a little bit of a, a tailwind, and we're making it onto the patch. Now we gotta do is, is betwixt it. That, that looks betwixtable. <laughs> Honestly, if you can get, like, exactly three-piece and it's a little downhill, then I'm, I'm okay with this. With no backspin. With no backspin. Excuse me, that has backspin. You saw me follow through. I, I can't tell. My brain is askew. Is this not curving the other way? You piece of crap. <laughs> wrong, wrong, wrong. <laughs> But listen, I don't have to worry about that too much because my daughter's still two. 
But yeah. But I think honestly, you know, there's a balance. Because I think, like, <clears throat> weirdly enough, Kate is like the, she's more chill about the school stuff. And I'm like the tiger dad who's like, there is literally no excuse if you're in, like, again, this is not a great take. There's no good excuse if you're in public school to not at least be getting, like, B pluses. Like, if you come home with, like, a C plus in the fourth grade, it's military school. I'm sorry to tell you, like, but, but like, what, it's, bro, it's spelling. It's spelling. Please. Now, again, it's kind of like, it's a funny take considering I play video games, like, mediocre with mediocrity for a living, but... Okay, we spoon. There is there is a spoon. Courtesy of the Matrix. Perfect. I love it. <clears throat> clean. Very clean. Okay, we're aiming dead on. And dead ass. Good night and good luck. I don't like that. The wind is not strong enough. The altitude is not changed enough. I'd love a 3.8 with backspin. Nice shot. That's my shot. Whether or not it's right remains to be seen. But that's what I, that's what I asked for. Now some front spin, some retroactive front spin, please. Nice. This is, this is a nasty one, man. Oh! <laughs> oh, let's go. Just had to trust uh, trust myself on that. Look at these chips in, dude. People are going crazy. <clears throat> Par. It's good. Don't don't be sad. Par is good. Would you be able to do that shot if you didn't play Halo for twelve hours a day in your youth? Listen, I always the way I think about like my own job my place in life is that essentially i got like insanely lucky and it's hard that, that makes me bad at like teaching lessons because like for lack of a better term because i don't even know what his relation is to me i just think of him as like a nephew for a while he wanted to be like a youtuber and a twitch streamer and he's like do you have any advice and i'm like i don't know not at all like it sounds like like i'm just trying to get rid of you which i'm not but like be born in the early 90s or the late 80s like that's basically the that's the cheat code i'm not saying you can't because the other advice is just like you know like you're 17 right now give it a go for like eight years as hard as you can and then if it doesn't work like take up a trade it's a full power Please, please, I should have... No, it's okay, so backspin would have been nice, though. That's, that's... Okay, backspin would have been nice, but whatever. Nice huh? I think it goes like that. It goes, it goes. Let's go, dude! Nice <clears throat> So like, you, I feel like I, I push back on this. I remember there was like a round table episode where like I push back on this. I have a respect for education and even to some extent the education system, which I feel like is not a take that a lot of streamers have. People will say like, well, you spent all that time in college and, and all that money and look at you now. And I'm like, well, yeah, but 
Like my aunts just got like crazy lucky. <laughs> if I could, if I was in charge 100% of someone else's life, what I would do is be like, hey, you can basically just like fuck around until you're like in the seventh grade. And then in the seventh grade, if you just like work pretty hard in one direction, you can pretty much, you could just get like an amazing job and live a comfortable life. You don't have to start in the seventh grade, but I was, because we were talking with my nephew and I was like, man, it's crazy. Like as a 34 year old, I'm like, dude, imagine, I'm talking to this 17 year old. I'm, I'm, well, mostly I'm listening to, you know, his closer family talk to him, to be fair. You don't appreciate it when you're 17, but imagine, like nobody expects you to do shit until you're like 25 anyway. Imagine if you could just pick a direction and work on it for like eight years, your ass would be in like the Hall of Fame for whatever you chose. But then the reason you'd be in the Hall of Fame is because like nobody does it, myself included. Because when you're 17, you're like, I don't know what I want to do. And also I like don't want to do that shit. I want to spend time with my friends and I want to have fun and I'm just becoming an adult. So I definitely feel like if I went back to being like uh, 17 years old, I would live my life like I was in the, the military and I would have no friends. And then like 10 years after that, I would be the CEO of a blockchain startup. My, my true dream in life. How about a three piece backspin? I like that. I, li I like the extra power, honestly. No blue sparks because it's not a big hill. I'll take that. What? Dude, you deserve that one. That You deserve that for that putt. It's in. Oh! <laughs> the sixth man! The sixth man. Whew. It's the move. Sixth man is a. You're thinking of the Arnold Schwarzenegger one where he's a clone. The sixth man is the one where the ghost helps them uh, win the state basketball championship in high school. Okay. Okay. We're making the finals. We are four points down, though. Insane take. Listen. We got we to stop calling reasonable opinions you disagree with insane takes okay i was literally talking about what i would do if you took my mind and time traveled it back into my 17 year old body okay i'm a i'm a i'm a dude you're a dude he's a dude we're all dudes that's kel mitchell from good burger you could just say interesting take but i disagree you don't have to say uh what an insane take i mean that's that's called an ad hominem attack who are you ryan johnson Who? Who? Oh, like you're doing right now? He was a boy. She was a girl. Can I make it any more obvious? That's damn true. He was a punk. She did ballet. <laughs> what more can I say? Nice I love this shot. Everybody wanted me to club up. And I said no. Nice on. What if Tom Cruise did one of those, um, like the spots that he's doing now before the movies where he's like, hey everybody, my name's Tom Cruise. Just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for making Top Gun Maverick the number one movie at the box office this year. <laughs> It feels good to be back at the movies. Now, I'm gonna cut off the tip of my penis with a pair of scissors. What if he did that, but instead of for like Mission Impossible, that it, it was like you see him take out the scissors and then it like when he cuts, it fades to black and then the trailer for the movie plays and it's just based on Avril Lavigne's Skater Boy.
I'm just this a uh, boy asking a girl to see if I'm good enough for her. Also, we're, we got a three-way tiebreaker for first place here thanks to that eagle. Holy cow. <clears throat> Resort C! <laughs> Resort C! Resort C! Holy cow. Bro, we gotta we gotta spoon this, but at the same time we cannot spoon this. So I honestly, with God as my witness, I think we just need three iron, full speed, no backspin. Full speed is three piece because we're in the rough. Well, that's how we drew it up. I'm going to definitely be further than that individual. Turns out some backspin would have been nice. Well. <laughs> still, honestly, it's not a bad approach. Please emancipate yourself from the chains of grind set thinking. Excuse me, I'm not a grind set Andy. I think my, my take on, and this is not a grind set take, holy cow, what an approach. Uh, they're incredible golfers. I'm not even upset at all. Um, I just like, I think back to when I was a teenager, it's not that I should have been on the grind set. I just should have been like doing, I should have had like a hobby. It's not really my parents' fault. We just happen to live in the suburbs. Will we win in the finals? No. And like, you know, I got my driver's license when I was 16, but both of my parents drove to work. So I was like, here I am with like a piece of paper that lets me drive, but I got nowhere to go. I'll just go to, go to oh, I'll walk to Jumbo Video and then um, go rent a Bubba Hotep again. We're a B plus gamer now. But like, I think you just gotta like, do, have enough free time that you're not super stressed. I don't think there's a whole lot of reasons for like, you know, a 15 year old kid to be stressed, but definitely like have enough going on that you're not like, hey, I spent four hours after school on a Thursday playing a video game that I only enjoyed for like 30 minutes. And then like after that, I just played three and a half hours out of like inertia where I was like, I don't have anything else to do. So I guess I'll just keep playing this game that I don't, that I think is just not even really that entertaining. It's just sort of like whiling the time away. You don't need to be grinding. Like you don't you don't have to have a, like a side hustle when you're 12 or whatever. But like, and, and it's not even the kid. It's like the, I think it's the parents' responsibility to try to strike that balance. And it's you know it's hard. Why are you describing me? Because it was fucking me too, idiot. <laughs> so people are like, people are like, I'm 17, but I don't think that's how I'll think when I'm 22. Well, I fucking passed that. I went through the looking glass, bitch. I'm not saying everybody feels the same way. I'm just saying, you know, it's a lot easier to relate once you've actually reached that point instead of trying to shake a Gudetama magic eight ball and it says ask again later. <laughs> 